Okay, we're on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 8 o'clock South Africa podcast here on Sunday uh, evening and uh, Sunday afternoon for the people from America and Sunday morning for the people... Monday morning? I don't really know. Uh, but in any case, um, today we only have myself, um, Anpu and Scratch on the podcast. Uh, as the Twitter announcement actually said, it'll just be the three of us answering questions and generally being slightly provocative. No, I don't think the word was promiscuous. No, that's not the word either. What is the word that I'm looking for? What was the word? I don't remember. Inappropriate. <laughs> Inappropriate, yes. There were many P's in there. That's why I said promiscuous. And the other one was the fact that I wanted to say proboscis. Inappropriate. Like toboscis. Yeah, like that guy. Yes, like that guy. Random shout out, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, today we're probably going to be talking about games, um, furries, and gaming, and apparently, a uh, guy. Is that how you say? No, oh, dude, I don't fucking know. I just like said it didn't look like that or whatever. So, so we're we're saying that he looks like what was that Muppet? I'm fucking. Mm-hmm. Oh, Gonzo. Gonzo, yes, he's the one who had a proboscis. Yeah, a a proper big, proboscis. He had a big schnoz. He had a big schnoz, which was a proboscis. Yeah. Had. Yeah, that's that, it. That, that word. For, for anybody that doesn't understand, this conversation started with Owl Man again. Yes. The freakish, again. strange. Owl, owl creature. Freak from Glasgow, if I'm not mistaken. Is it from Glasgow? Yeah, I think it's from Glasgow. Hmm. Well, well yeah, his if fingers look like robust guy. All that you do is you Google Lord of Tears. Lord of Tears. Is it Lord of Tears? Yeah, that's actually the real name. Hmm. I can actually get an image here. Hmm. It's like the, the craziest first sheet, seeing that Halloween is coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be... Oh, speaking about Halloween, guys, um, we obviously have to come up with a couple of ideas in respect to our Halloween podcast. Hmm? Yeah, we're having a Halloween podcast because we have an international... Uh, Ish following. Yes, so we'll have to have it on a Saturday. Ugh, I'm going to need to drink a lot more. Oh, we don't celebrate Halloween like... The, uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, but our international. No, but, but, but uh, th- th- you don't understand. You're not listening. We don't celebrate Halloween like the Americans do <coughs> in uh, knocking on people's door asking for candy. Because if you do that here, you'll get shot. <laughs> you'll get shot. <laughs> but <laughs> if, if, but we do have Halloween parties. So I don't know why people say no. We don't celebrate Halloween. We do have. I celebrate mean, celebrate Halloween as a day to drink and get really, really fun. My, my first Halloween party was like. I was in primary school, and that same night we ended up on a radio station because we were a bunch of kids walking towards a radio station. I can't even remember what the hell happened. Ooh, that actually sounds like a great idea for a podcast where we like somehow find a way to actually get a lot of Wi-Fi and really, really like power and like get power banks and stuff like that, and go down to the Kenton Park um, like hospital. Why to the hospital? Because it's haunted, apparently. I did not know this. Also, what the, where the hell... How am I going to get to Kempton Park? You're going to drive to my place, then you're sleeping over, and then we're going to Kempton Park. Actually, and then we're going to go to the child... The, the, the children's ward is apparently, like, extremely creepy in that, like, yeah. Um, burn victims. Moving on from that... Uh, Raquin, yeah. I think you need the absinthe in Amsterdam specifically yeah. above and beyond that raccoon the thing is is that if you need absinthe or if you how much absinthe did you drink if you drank just a shot then you're not doing it right <laughs> drink the entire bottle and I swear to god you will hallucinate no you will vomit well vomit <laughs> hallucinate both of them will happen at some point <laughs> If you drink, maybe, look, maybe, maybe two or three shots and then you'll be into it otherwise light it on fire uh, blow it out, s- suck up the entire vapor thing with a straw. Uh, and that's uh, that just gives me a headache just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that crap. 
It's so it's so disgusting. It tastes oh. horrible. Yeah, it yeah. tastes like a pot plant. I know it's it's horrifying. But the thing is, is that like I actually still have a bottle of empty absinthe on the uh, on my on my what do you call that thing a fridge. Um, <laughs> Did you just forget what to call a fridge? That happens more often than <laughs> yeah. Like this whole week he's been like, what are words? Uh, I can't English right now. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm gonna call a coat rack something completely different. That thing that that takes your hat with coats as well. <laughs> but yes. Anyway, yeah. So I do actually have a bottle of that. I have had more experience with absence than I would like to admit. One of them being in a PK. Um, yeah, another cool thing there. Yeah. No. Uh, that's that's uh, pretty much a full PK. Is a shot of absence and a shot of tequila directly after one another. In whatever order you want it, but the thing is, is that it's like a double shot of getting like kicked in the throat. Yeah, it's not cool. Yeah, uh, Rakuin anise is aniseed, if I'm not mistaken. Anise. Yeah. Oh, anise. Yes, yeah. anise. Aniseed. But it's uh, no, it's still freaking horrible. That taste is just the. If you drink a shooter of it and you swallow it down quickly enough, it's like okay, you don't taste too much of it. But mm -hmm. if you drink like three or four shooters on it, and especially if you get wasted on it, absinthe is one of those drinks that I unfortunately everybody has those that that drink that they can't drink anymore, right? Yeah. Because they got like pissed drunk on it, right? I have a list of them. <laughs> I don't have a list of any. In fact, like I've gotten pissed drunk on a lot of things. I still drink it. It's because I pushed past my uh, my gag reflex I guess no it's it's the shooter things it's like yeah, Sambuca absinthe yeah. those things and and um, uh, Mampur what is Mampur Mampur English? is not in anything in English Mampur remains Mampur well it's yeah, kind of like it's kind of like it made out of it, well it depends any, like any kind fruit, of fruit really. yeah. yeah it's just like super distilled <clears throat> alcohol made from any kind of fruit that you probably have lying around basket lychee whatever the fuck Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, Victor's list would be blank because he drinks on occasion rather than um, any other way. I, he's half a teetotaler. Like, he drinks at free meets. At least that's the only time that I've ever seen him drink. Um, an interesting thing, actually, uh, is... And Scratch has actually also finally found out what this is, but the attitude adjuster... Yeah, it's, it's kind of just like, it, it tastes like they just mixed all the like stuff that's supposed to be energy drink, alcohol, into a giant glass. It's not actually energy drink, uh, energy drink uh, alcohol at all. I mean, like but there like, is some like potency, potency, there is a shot of potency in there, I will admit, but there is vodka, it's mostly clear alcohols. Mm -hmm. um, that means Malibu, uh, it's, yeah, it's Malibu, it's um, vodka, it's Mampur, yeah. it's... Uh, uh, Bowls Blue, uh -huh. uh, Potency, and uh, another, Very and, possibly, <laughs> and, and possibly, yeah, uh, Bowls Red. Oh, you mean the, what's the name? Not Cherry Liqueur. It was probably Cherry or Strawberry. It could have been Cherry Liqueur, but the thing is, is that it is, it kicks up, it, it really, it, like, if you're, uh, if you're not fun. ready for it, if you're not ready for it, it will kick you in the gut five times and then make you vomit. <laughs> this yeah. has happened to more people than I know. My father has vomited off of this stuff. Uh, Marotter has uh, vomited off of this stuff. <laughs> um, there's a, a fur called Dusky that's v uh, vomited off of this stuff. Doge has gotten... Uh, Doge, who is actually fairly well on his liquor, um, was very, very close to actually getting, like... I think he, uh, out of ten, he was at an eight after just the entire thing from being a three. Why, why must you force people to throw up in your presence? Because my house is, like, I mean, like, I am trying to make every single fur that has actually come here who drinks to throw up in my bathroom. It's, it's one of my things on my bucket list. It's, it's, like, his, it's like his ritual. <laughs> it is my ritual. <laughs> my ritual is literally Blackwoods, ETC, make somebody throw up. Yeah. I, I only did, like, one of those three. 
<laughs> Everybody knows with me is that you cannot, uh, you shouldn't actually give me anything hard to drink when I'm out partying. Scratch already knows this that I, I can't stop. There's a there's a point where I just don't stop. Yeah, it, it doesn't turn off. And <laughs> at that point, I know, I need to be going home before that point. Scratch, remember that day that we had what was it? What was that vodka that you guys had uh -uh. at at your at your res during uh, one of the um, um, carry six packers? Did I, didn't I make like no vodka? no 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 no? It was a it was a literal ninety five percent proof vodka. Oh, is that horrible shit, Russian yeah. oil. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like more. Dude, I had an entire bottle of wine and I had a shot of that and I was fucked. It yeah, was well, dude. horrifying. Dude, that's the point. That stuff is like poison, straight up. Mm. Okay. It is. It was. It was literal poison. I think that I was drunk for the rest of the night off of that. I think I had two glasses of wine and then, like the two of us, you and me, we fought. We finished a bottle of wine. We had half a shot of that, and we were goners. Yeah, no, seriously. You, if you take one shot of that at the start of the evening, you will instantly reduce your bill for going out that evening by fifty percent. Seventy-five. Close enough, like, buy a shit ton. Yeah. But the thing is, is that, um, that, like, I mean, Victor mentions that it should be fun at a brighter watch. And the thing is, is that I don't necessarily think so. Specifically because, yes, granted, most of your plants will get, like, acid we'll everything, and they will all die. Um, and uh, secondly, your bathrooms will both be full, and then there will be a third or a fourth person who is also, like, vomiting somewhere. And, um, yeah. That's one thing that <clears throat> that I hate about a party with beers. If there's way too much drinking beer going on, then a queue starts to develop at the toilet. Yeah, not to vom now. No, not to, that's just to frickin... <laughs> yeah, look, I, I generally eat, ugh, drink, uh, like one or two beers an evening, or not an evening, but when I'm out on an evening, because the thing is, is that, like, beer just gets dry, and then I just hate it. No, uh, you, you're not skilled. <laughs> uh, no, it's not about being skilled at beer. It's about having good beer to drink. And frankly, if I'm going to be drinking Castle Draft all day, I'm going to die. Like, I remember one day I went out, I think it was around about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then, like, around about 8 o'clock. And I mean, I've been drinking beer, and I've been metering myself throughout the entire way through. I had a hangover by 8. <laughs> Just drinking black label. You rack the discipline. Yeah, but you have to drink okay, a lot of so it. Rakuen, <laughs> yeah, I, I drank quite a bit, but I mean, like, uh, Rakuen mentions, or he asks us a question, which of the plants do you think would benefit most from a thorough vomiting? Um, so and Tiger, by the way, I am not a lightweight. Scratch nose. Mm -hmm. uh, Unpu doesn't necessarily know as well, but the thing is, both of us got really, really screwed one day, and we were drinking quite well. Keldon! would know very well how much I can drink. Um, let's just assume that we started at 7. We drank throughout the night. We closed two pubs. Mm -hmm. um, we drank until the sun came up. We slept until 10. We drank some more. And we drank until 5. It sounds like and me years, years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, is that, you know what's funny? Keldon is older than you are. <coughs> I know. And he drinks more than you do. But this could be years, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Any case, so I mean, furry drinking escapades apart, uh, like uh, aside, um, we were talking about games earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. Were we? I I think so. Yeah, and um, rage maybe because a lot of people are going to that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, well, you're not going because you're going to like uber massive festival thing. <laughs> <laughs> I I I don't have a choice. <laughs> I have to. You have a choice. No, if you're I say no, to take I, if I say no, then I'm gonna piss off a lot of people. But in any ways, is what I'm, what is there to do at Rage? That's my big question. <clears throat> there, you know, you know what's you know what's awesome to do at Rage. You know what's really, really awesome to do at Rage? One. 
game. Walk. <laughs> cool. Walk around. That's literally cool. like. And if you've got friends there, if you've got people to buy, oh, 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 and buy, like, large amounts of Rocket Raccoon memorabilia. Oh, Rocket. Dude. Uh, moving on. Um, <laughs> uh, like, the thing is, is that, like, I mean, I've, I've been to Rage, what, three times, no, two times now. Um, once I went alone, the other time I went with Siren, and uh, we met up with a whole bunch of people there, and literally, you walk around, you check the stuff out, you look at people for a while, um, you watch people role-play for a while. If you're not doing the gaming thing, then... You play yeah. in the Magic Tournaments. I'm not even sure whether Magic Tournaments actually take place. Oh, wait, I saw where they do take place. It's cramped, and... Yeah. <laughs> That's always, that's every magic tournament. Yeah, but I can't, like, the thing is, is that I wouldn't be able to handle that. I would not be able to handle, like, large crowds standing around me, and then I'm going to be sitting there going, like, I play Magic Missile, because that's not actually, like, uh, you know. Oh, Jesus Christ, come on, dude. Lightning Bolt. You know this. Magic, Magic Missile. I cast Flare. I don't know. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's a big technology expo. If I'm not mistaken, what type of technology did did they expo there? I believe this year, obviously, they're going to show the DK2 Oculus Rift. I don't think is Rage a Tech Expo or is it a gaming expo? It's both, or at least it's trying to do both, and it's um, not necessarily failing at it since it's got like what twenty thousand people over the entire weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm sorry, Tiger Night Eye, by the way, for attempting to break your back. But the thing is, is that I never break backs. I just click them, and if I don't hear a click, I squeeze harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Until a problem. I hear a click. There's your problem, dude. No, don't. No, there's no problem with that. Dude, I yeah, I yeah. Even myself, like, don't ever do that again. Yeah, I know, but no, dude, again, two years, nine months. Yeah, like, yeah. FC. You fucking deserved it. 2,600 laners, in other words, going on to an unsecure network with 2,600 PCs. One virus yeah. to rule them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can sort of wipe a network if you're in, uh, uh, well, yeah, wipe two, like, 2K worth PCs. Yeah. That's scary. But then again, if you don't have a, yeah, it, like 20,000 RAN, 20K. Uh, uh, 2K as in, like, 2K, 2,000 PCs. Oh, I mean, they're like I'm seriously. Sure. If you don't go on, if you go onto that thing without an AV, then yeah, that's that's your like stupid mistake. Ah, uh, yes, Borderlands. I actually still want Borderlands to in like involve like a furry mutant creature. That'd be awesome. Uh, what else is Borderlands? Like, what else is interesting in Borderlands? Like, and when was the last time I actually played Borderlands? Jeez. The game's fun though. Like a, like a furry mutant creature. Yeah. Like a wolf, or for your part, a. a. Uh, uh, an, an Anubian. Or, or, or like a mutated skag. Or no! Come on! Yes. <laughs> this yeah, is. This is. is was fluffy enough. enough. This is a question because actually recently I'm looking into like all these older first person shooter games for those who don't know so I, I posted that Call of Duty where the D-O-O -O is actually the same font as Doom uh, <laughs> videos on the site but um, what I want to know is like uh, Quake alright uh, if, if you guys ever played Quake 2 there were these Things that run on four legs. What the fuck were those things? Demon dogs. Quake two. Things that run on four legs. Look, it's it, it's Demon like really old, but Demon dogs. <coughs> Demon dogs, man. Quake is that place where everything is like modified with metal attached to them. Demon cyborg dogs. Dude. Quit it. Oh, it's just called the mutant. It seems. Mutant dog. Oh, actually, if you just Google Quake to dog and then you find really? it. <laughs> really, really. Oh, it, really? It, it, it's like a human face. Oh shit, that is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Moving. 
What are you doing? I have no idea. It's I'm 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 sort of trying to emulate like this this whole kind of like uh Half Life Two uh crab head things with, with that thing. Oh yeah, you have a serious problem with that, wasn't it? Yeah. It was yes, you, I have, yes. Look, I have a problem with Ravenhall. I have a problem with crab head things. Because I don't like the way that they burn. No, I, I find it ridiculously funny. I find it ridiculously scary. I instead of shooting it, I would rather burn them up. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the burning is creepy. That's for sure. Oh my like, God, help me! No. No. That was on, actually a pretty good imitation. <laughs> that was actually that's really creepy. <laughs> yeah, well, it it it's. I mean, it drives the point home that these people are, that these things were human once. Yes, I know, and that's the reason why it scares me. I don't like things that were human ones. Okay, so going in that direction, and I know a lot of people like Portal, I want to actually ask us who here is... Do you guys think that we might be hearing anything from Valve for Half-Life 3 ne next year? Dude, I think, yeah. No, I not, th not that the game might be released. Who thinks that Valve might say, like, a thing. <laughs> Valve says a thing. <laughs> just, just like a panel called Valve says a thing. Val like Valve can be packed. Valve talks about making a game. A game. Because yeah, well, now I'm just thinking because if you played Episode Two, uh, and the way the whole Mind thing. Spoiler alert! I'm assuming. Actually, ended. So spoiler alert: if you haven't played Episode Two. Which then you're like years behind, by the way. Um, I'm not necessarily years behind. I just choose not to play them. There is the the Borealis ship has the logo on it for Aperture Laboratories. Uh, well, mm -mm, mm, yeah, actually, yeah. And there's a there's an Easter egg in Portal Two as well. If you go to one of the old cordoned off parts of the old Aperture Labs, you can actually find a dock uh, that has uh, like a life preserver ring with, inscribed with the Borealis title. Um, the dock, the dock Tiger, Tiger Night Eye says that there probably will not be a Half-Life 3, or at least not necessarily not, well he says not Half-Life 3, because it is an open ending and point. No, I don't think that is necessarily the case. That franchise is so... Uh, demanded by the public is that if Valve doesn't create it, somebody will. Well, I mean, if that's <laughs> the case, then if Valve doesn't create it, then you might as well just give it to George Lucas and see how many plot holes he can make. It, I, I think the whole, like, Half-Life 3 thing is just not overblown. It's just, like, there's far too much hype for Valve to, like, do anything that will sate what the internet has brought upon it. It is because episode 3 ended so poorly. Or not poorly, it ended like... Have you episode ever, 2. Uh, oh, sorry, episode 2. Have you ever watched like a, a series like Homeland or something, right? It ended that way. Like a series like that would end like... It just raises like more shit. Yeah, well that's... Yeah. <laughs> then, so in other words, it was given the option to carry on or the option to not carry on. It's always giving you the option to carry on. <laughs> it's always giving you the option to not carry on, too. <laughs> but you must uh, use your mind and find out what is necessary. Buckley says Valve is planning to release Half-Life 3 with the HDC VR headset release. Now, my question... in the next 20 years. My question is, is will Half-Life 3... Maybe... Do you guys think that you might pick up a portal gun in that one? Maybe. I... I... I'm completely unsure. I'm not sure that Valve will just immediately sort of like connect those two universes that outright. I mean, obviously they are connected, but like I don't think they'll, they'll go that blatantly that quickly. But I, perhaps. I can't say no. I, I think I agree with uh, Rakuin on this one where he says, Half-Life 3 brought to you by the developers Nuke of Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, Duke Nukem Forever did come out and it sucked, so I don't want to use that comparison. Also, the, the developers of Duke Nukem Forever, you know... Yeah, but uh, Duke, Nukem, Duke Nukem sucked because they worked on it for so long, and they didn't... As if you work on a game for too long, the technology in the background it improves, right? 
Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And they had yeah. like this old engine and shit that it ran on. Ugh. Yeah, but not just that. There were like licensing disputes and money ran out at some point. There was a shit ton of stuff. Not not to mention the fact that that yeah. Duke Nukem as a character is like a complete and misogynist and <laughs> yeah, and, and you're and you're kind of going like, okay, cool. Let's take 1990s logics and put it into 2010. This sounds like a great idea. I think it's yeah. gonna be awesome. I'm actually that. ridiculously impressed that Anita Sarkeesian didn't play that game, because then she would have had a story. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, yeah, do, uh, don't ask. I'm not touching that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna ask. Let's let's not let's uh, leave I'll, that one. Yeah, we'll take this offline. Um, the, the thing is, yeah, I mean, Duke was definitely Duke, Duke was a product of its time. You can't really like say that he. Obviously, he doesn't stand up today. He, he's like completely not what the mainstream public wants. But like back in like. The early '90s, he was sort of, he was still the sort of stereotypical action movie badass, and oh, it's the first video game that swore. Oh, no. and, so, and, and and actually, had, and had strippers, and actually quite mean, eh? <laughs> I mean, yeah. today, if uh, today it has to go through so many legal issues just to say, I'm gonna rip off your head and shit down your neck. That yeah, was that like Duke be... Nukem swearing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like think think about it like this. I mean, uh, what about? Uh, Jeez, now I can't even remember it. There's also a semi rail shooter, um, uh, Serious Sam. Yeah. Serious Sam is always good, and then Painkiller actually sort of like a, an homage to, to Serious Sam. Yeah. Wasn't the bit of a, No, People Can Fly wasn't. Yeah, not the same team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it kind of was. Uh, and it kind of was, all, yeah. It was definitely sort of an homage to Serious Sam, but that was sort of mechanically driven. It didn't revolve around the character of Sam so much. Mm. It revolved around the weapons that you picked up. Yeah, and the dumbass enemies. No, no, I'm gonna run to you, man. Spare uh, says portal with a VR headset sounds like a, t a ticket to puke face. Yes, I I agree 100 percent because it is. It's like that simulator that I have, that No Limits roller coaster simulator, right? Put on a, a, a rift or something while you're doing that. It's like ten times more vomit inducing than riding an actual roller coaster because of the fact that you aren't moving around. Yeah. <laughs> There's a very similar experience you can have. Yeah. With another I mean, game. Imagine, imagine putting yourself into first person. Like, yeah. But I mean, imagine putting yourself into first person in that buggy. That like drives like shit. Well, well, dude. Also, like, uh, like you can with with a VR headset on. If you have a VR headset and you have access to the game, try connecting. Um, you know, try getting Mirror's Edge to run. Like, I hear horror stories about people trying to play that game on. VR. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> Or yeah. or uh, anything oh. anything like like I'm talking about in the forum. I mean, imagine VR and Unreal Tournament Four. How do, it, you, how do you like steer or control that? It's properly? so quick paced. I think you'll probably flip and throw your VR say it's it away. Yeah, you'll just like bomb immediately. You're gonna go. Oh, about, oh. You would have to sit down. You would have to sit down because standing up, you'd probably break your TV, your computer, and probably the people around you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will break your neck, yeah, because you're gonna like turn around all the time. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, I, so there are some games that's probably not that good with it, but then again, as Alien Isolation uh, oh, yeah. did it, I mean, like, uh, how freaking horrible is that, eh? Yeah, no, that sounds like a good time if you're into horror games. Imagine, no, no, that, that sounds like a terrible time. That sounds Dude. like me dying. I said if you're into horror games. I would games. probably have a heart attack. Yeah, I would probably have a heart attack. <laughs> but then again, uh, uh, with the Oculus, I saw a video online, I think it was Markiplier, that played this chicken game. And even just looking at the video of the games, I'm like, Ugh, that, that w just the video on screen makes me want to get sick. Because you have to, like, pick up uh, a little uh, 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 grain and whatnot from uh, from the ground, 
like seeds. <laughs> and you have oh. to actually tilt your head down and pick it up. <laughs> fatal frame. I have. I don't. Yeah. I have no idea what fatal, fatal frame. frame is. An interesting. It's it's a Japanese horror game. Um, in the fact that it's not really like horror based. It's ghosts and taking pictures of them to kill them somehow. Like, again, it really does need to get storyline in straight. I mean, like, yeah, Spaz says, you know, with a headset would be nice. Um, music's good. Scenery's good. Uh, game design and game development. Ugh, it's... Like, I, I have actually seen uh, Markiplier through, play through it. At one point, he found a glitch, which makes one of the characters, like, literally glitch out with her legs. So it looks like she's doing a shuffle, but, like, a really fast-paced shuffle. So it's like... <laughs> I, I just want to ask something. When somebody says Japanese horror, is, is this like... Uh, the premise for it, it's always like a scary girl with uh, long black hair. Not always. Not always. Because I just googled Fatal Frame and that's the first thing that I see. It looks like the ring. I, look, I mean, the thing is, is that just... Think about think about Japanese people for a couple of seconds. I mean, um, yeah, that would probably be the scariest thing that I would see in my entire life most of the time. Oh, the dead duck. girl with black hair because it's um, culturally black-haired people there. Um, but that is pretty, yeah, that, that is, like, like Spaz says, it's a standard ghost for Japanese people. Uh -huh. um, and the thing is, is that it's because, firstly, you've got a girl. Secondly, she's dead. Thirdly, she's trying to kill you. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, that's like the trifecta of shit you don't want to see. Yeah. Uh, Buglish, if surround sound scares you, uh, listen to binaural audio. That would scare the living crap out of you. But isn't that, that also that same stuff where they do like the head cutting thing? Yes. Where the, yeah, with the hair. Some people get off on that, and I've said this before. Yeah, some, some people get off on that. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely serious. Like, there are, there are people who have, like, it's an affinity for sound. And the thing is that, like, those things are actually, to a large extent, it's become a, 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 a small craze. And I mean, I say small as in, like, a lot of these videos get up to about fifteen to 17,000 hits. Um, just for that kind of thing. People put on their headphones and they listen to these people sort of moving from ear to ear and moving over your head and everything like that. It, it does kind of happen. People are into weird shit, man. Do you know how they record that? It's like uh, the microphone looks like your head with ears. That's all that it is. I, I've, I'm posting a picture of a binaural microphone right here. That's it's cool. it's it's typically stereo. It's not even surround sound. It's just stereo because you only have two eardrums. Mm -hmm. No, it's on face. Only has so two eardrums. So it sounds completely three dimensional, but it's because of the method that they used to record it. Yeah, that makes sense. You were audiophile. I was an audio engineer. <laughs> so close enough. Close enough. Mm -mm. But no, not to, uh, I, if you want to battle with me like the the the, the shit with uh, the competition between vinyl and digital. Is that, is that still going on? <laughs> it's still going on. But uh, I I would just tell you, you know what? Sorry, digital. You can get so much more out of it, but probably not CD quality. But a vinyl, the information gets lost at a certain level as well. So I'm no, not that type of audio file. You know, vinyl is still technically digital if you think if you think about it in like a under atomic a, level. <laughs> it's gonna not be atomic, digital. On, a, on a single level, it's still a discrete signal that of a it's an yeah it's a discrete signal. It's not a continuous signal because obviously you can only machine uh, the vinyl down to a certain level. Oh well, it, it, it's meant to be analog, and then people come. Oh no, analog tapes, and then uh, but like the big tapes, that's how all recording studios used to work and I'm like yeah but mechanically tapes as well e uh, electrical charge is quantifiable it's not it's not completely analog there's no such thing as completely analog but yeah, would you rather like work with 
Would you rather work with mono sound or uh, stereo? Stereo, duh. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like the thing is, is that for for me, like I mean, I remember when I was be when I was still like young enough to buy Beach Boys albums. Um, oh. A lot of them were still done, like the the CDs were still done in mono. So I mean, like I would, <clears throat> what would happen is, is that like say one of my one of my stereos or one of my like speakers actually, so I can only hear half the music. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but that's like no. But, but stereo gives you dynamics and sound. It gives you open. Uh, uh, it, it can you can spread voices and stuff and stereo sound. And if you don't know if you're uh, designing music or engineering, the, the way it's done, you actually have to have like a stereo panning level for everything. It's called a, a panning map, so that it fits in. And it's also the same that you have a specific EQ level for everything that it. Falls out the entire. What does what does your emotional quotient have to do with anything? What? what? Oh, equalizer. Gee, e- sorry. E- come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on. Oh God. Oh, face paw. <laughs> yeah, but another. I I actually ordered a binaural <laughs> microphone like this before. But uh, I had to cancel that order due to money problems. But they're not that expensive. You can get cheaper ones, and then you can do like that recording for that virtual air cut thing, and you can completely freak people out. Just d- d- doing anything. You don't even need to do the haircut. If you just walk by that thing, it's about Hello. the it's about the volumes as well. When you're standing far and you're coming closer to the mic, the volume increases dramatically. But there was a game that was based on this that had the VR and everything set into it as well. Like, if if um, you can de- if you can design a video game using that type of audio, I'll probably not even play it, especially if it's a horror game because it's going to be way too realistic. It had it had jump scares that works in it. You actually had to sit at a table. It was called Don't Move, if I'm not mistaken, um, where you had to like I think keep two buttons down. So you had to keep your hands on the um, on the table. Oh. Oh yeah, man, I know you'd that have thing. snakes, you'd have spiders, you'd have bees. There's a raptor. Uh, yeah, uh, you'd have a raptor come in, and the thing is, is that it was literally sort of semi, kind of like scary. It was actually pretty damn scary if if you're not like if you don't know what you're in for. See, here's the thing: like there, a, a game has actually been developed, or I think is in development, that has absolutely no video. It's a game sort of being played blindly and uh, all you have are audio cues going around like footsteps reverberating off of walls getting a lot of Five Nights at Freddy's uh, the, the latest one 4 is it? yeah 4 does have that in but I mean like it, it, it hasn't it, it's not supposed to be like a jump scare game it's supposed to be sort of an exploration game and it has that sort of serious game feel to it where there's I mean this is more this is accessible to more people like you can l- actually have a blind person play this and have their own gaming experience, which I find incredibly like empowering. I find it awesome. Like the the fact that you can do stuff like that that will open up the gaming genre to more people. That's fucking amazing. Just audio. Well, you get to, uh, the, the, with it's audio. audio. I said just audio. Well, you get a lot of uh, games that is actually based on like music. Um, and audio, but not like that. Uh, for example, if you take a guitar era, for example, that's actually like a rhythmic game. It, it's mm-hmm. about the audio, actually. It's not about anything yeah. else. Yeah, Is but there's still, you know, still visual cues involved. Yeah. Though. Uh, but you get, yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. But just audio? I don't know. I don't think that would be that entertaining. <laughs> I'd, lo- I'd love to give it a go just to see what it's like. I mean, it sort of walking a mile in the shoes of a blind person to see how they how they would get around for example like without a walking stick or something or what the world is like to them it would be completely <laughs> crap for me because i actually feel very sorry for blind people like <laughs> no, well, the thing sure. is is that you shouldn't actually you you shouldn't feel sorry for for blind people at all um, n- not necessarily for the fact that they are the way that they are but it's it's more along the lines that you know when it comes to being blind um, and this actually comes from like teaching that I got when I was doing my sports science degree. The thing is, is that literally what you need to do with with blind people is the fact that you know what 
Um, Cheats him still got it like, like yeah, everybody if else. You, if, you invite, if you invite them into a house, right? The last, like, all you need to do is tell them where everything is. You need to tell them that there are specific obstacles that they need to look out for. And they'll look out for them themselves. They know to a large extent, they, they have special. Yeah, yeah but that, that's how you treat them, right? But it's still, it's still a shitty thing to be. As well, it is very, it is, it is, it is crap. But the thing is, is that there are people on record who actually say that um, they don't necessarily want either sight or hearing back. Because the thing is, is that it's. It was, it's it was something that happened in their life that gave them purpose. Exactly. It's, it's like losing your legs. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that you need to find the purpose, of course. But, I mean, if you get there and if you're already there, then that's amazing. Yeah, also, Rack, when those uh, references like, uh, plus they get free dogs, the, the blind do not get free dogs. Like, I, I, like, gave a little bit of money to a charity that uh, trains guide dogs. Those things are not cheap. Yeah, no, they're not cheap at all. Because, I mean, imagine the amount of money that actually has to go into training a guide dog to be and as, as good, and as, good awesome as a guide dog. dog. Look, yeah. no, no, no. Guide dogs are freaking amazing. Like, guide dogs in Stellenbosch Scratch, you've seen those, uh, like, you remember those yeah. twins? Yeah. Guide dogs being able to guide these, there are two twins who were in Stellenbosch when we were there, um, who would actually be running to class with their guide dogs. And the thing is that their guide dogs knew when to tell them when to stop knew which robots they were going to hit, knew which road that they were on, knew which freaking res they were going to. It didn't freaking matter. These things were absolutely, insanely awesome. Yeah, no, those dogs absolutely know what they would do, and kudos to the handlers that trained them. Yeah, yeah, so that, that takes a lot of like effort. That takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. Because, I mean, firstly, you need to buy a, I think most of them are, what, purebred Labradors? It doesn't necessarily have to be, but like those are the most common ones because they, they train very easily. Yeah. Is a question, uh, would you rather lose your sight or your hearing? I would rather lose my sight. Hearing. Sight. I'd rather lose my hearing. Even though, you know what, it's actually difficult because if you lose your sight, you're so dependent on other people to get around and those type of things. Yeah. Well, apparently we get free guide dogs. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> okay, okay. okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of philanthropy. Shout out to the SA Guide Dog Society. If you guys feel like um, donating to them, just please look them up. They, I feel it's a worthy cause. I think it's also a very worthy cause. Yeah. There we go. Random shout out for the day, aside from uh, Tobascus from earlier. Mm -hmm. For no good reason. For no good reason. Tobascus. Mini Minotaurs. I can fuck this thing up. <laughs> I, I tried to get. I'm trying to get this, like, the admission band for a maze off of my arm without cutting the ribbon, but it's held in place with this little grommet that's been clamped shut, and I'm trying to like clip through it with some fucking um, pl uh, side cutters, and it is not working. Yeah. Uh, now you see, the thing is, is that as a um I mean, the only reason why I would choose sight instead of hearing is because I'm a lecturer. I mean, I need to hear my students' responses. Um, granted, yes, I wouldn't necessarily be able to read my book any better, but then again, I mean, there are books out there available in Braille, which I would have to learn, which I have no idea how to, because at this point, it's very, very difficult to learn any language after, you know... Yeah, that, uh, that also looks like exceptionally difficult, like how to read that. Yeah, my other yeah you know, my issue is like, I my work revolves around like I'm a I'm a developer, so it would make my work infinitely tougher. Yeah, if I couldn't read. Yeah, if you can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna be like one of those people that has to put like the audio um, thing on and. Uh. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like th again, it, it depends on your job. I mean, um, imagine having to hear your code and voice. Yeah, that must be weird. Like, I, I can't, I can't compile code in my head by like reading it out. Especially if it's like C plus plus. Anything, any coding language. I'll no, if it, if it's like .dot net, it's easy. 
Because it sounds like English. <laughs> Any code can sound like English if you just write it right. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, if I give the variables like Taiwanese names, then it's obviously not going to be readable. But yeah. Java. Java and, and C, uh, C plus. No, okay, imagine you're coding a machine language. And mm -hmm. having that read out. No, screw, mm. dude, I did machine language for a bit, screw that noise. Mm. <sighs> How am I going to fucking this in off now? Hmm. Okay, um, actually, I'm going to have a, an interesting question come out. Who's excited for the uh, new installment to Star Wars? Eh. eh. I'll go watch it, I'm just not, like, super, super, like, amped to go My through. mom actually phones me and tells me, I'm not even a Star Wars fan, and she actually phones me and tells me, because she is actually a little bit of a Star Wars fan, it was like her time that those movies came out, and she's like, well, now there's this whole channel on like Discovery, or on like DSTV with Star Wars, <laughs> showing Star Wars stuff, and I'm like, what are you talking about? She phones me with, <laughs> with this, oh, okay, great. There's a whole channel about that now? Yeah, there's a whole st de channel dedicated to Star Wars. Yeah, believe it or not. Wow. Until next month. Those of you who don't know and those of you who actually have DSTV, go ahead and have a look at it. DSTV has been um, pasting it across the walls everywhere. I didn't even know about this. Again, like, <laughs> I don't have DSTV. Neither, so. neither did I until my mom phoned. <laughs> You have to watch this. I'm like, I know nothing. I know that they had like this laser swords, and I know that. Darth do you know less about Star Wars than I do? Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's. Oh, uh, oh uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold father. on. Father, <laughs> and hold Darth on. Vader is Anakin Skywalker. I know uh, that. Shut up and listen to me. Do you <laughs> know less about Star Wars than I do? Probably is. You actually do. God. You, you, wow. The only the only thing I about. Absolve. The only yeah, thing actually, about um, uh, Scratch, I hereby absolve you from the entire fact that you haven't watched all of the Star Wars things. In fact, I think you have watched all of the Star I've Wars watched, things. I've watched the, I watched A New Hope through uh, uh, Revenge. All fairness, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the I, first I, movies were shit. Who's gonna watch those anyway? So leave them. <clears throat> I, c I kind of have to just to catch up with y'all. Anyway, Anpu, go ahead. I, I remember like the first remake movie where they started remaking the Star Wars franchise was with the Pod Racers. Yeah. And, and that was cool. I, I dig that. And then I watched the second movie and it was boring. <laughs> Yo, I actually only watched the second one in the cinema with some friends. Uh, like of the new, I say new trilogy, like episodes one, two, and three. I never saw one. I don't really care to see three, but uh, yeah, I mean, I have officially watched four of the six Star Wars movies. That's great. And I even had that Pod Racer game. Yeah, that was fun. Damn it, that was fast. If if you like racing games, those are. I, I think that game it classifies as the second fastest racing game ever. Possibly just next to Wipeout. Yeah, I think Wipeout is the number one, the one in the tunnel where you have to dodge. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know that one. Dude, that is insane. But um, the Star Wars Pod Race has had its moments where it also gets like really crazy fast and you had to dodge like freaking everything. But it, if you install it now, you're going to look at it and go, no, yeah. no, I don't want to look at seven polygons. It didn't <laughs> age. <laughs> <laughs> Visually, the game did not age well, but it is still a good game. It's like trying to play Lara Croft. Like the first one. <laughs> Unremastered. Oh, wait. Um, Tempo and them are actually getting around uh, to actually, like, uh, if I can remember correctly, they were taking pictures of the new, um, or of the, of the old animatronic things that they were using for um, Dinotopia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So remastering games, just you know, on point and practically actually sort of segueing a little bit, that actually sounds like it's going pretty well. Uh, also, Tempo is busy working on a new chapter to uh, Six's Wild. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and the whole um, uh, ship folk thing. Uh, apparently, well, I mean, he's working on that too. 
uh, which is actually pretty awesome. So yeah, I mean, like, Tempo is busy working quite well on a lot of things. Uh, so yeah, that's an update on Tempo and them. Um, yeah, RK actually also released two or one new video last time I checked, which also looks pretty interesting. It has to do with. All oh, right, he was telling us, wasn't he, about Yif? Me? Hmm. What about Yif? Yif. Yes, what about him? Oh, everything about it. Okay. There was, there was videos oh. about. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> I'm gonna eat myself some fox tail. God. <laughs> Just the tail. It's it's <clears throat> fuzzy. I also want the animatronic dinosaur. Uh, so that. It, <laughs> wow. Okay. I can oh. yeah, I could creep people out of it, like <laughs> open their doors, but, like. But Jurassic there was Park actually style. wasn't there that one guy who went into Central Park with a with an animatronic dinosaur. Was it an like animatronic dinosaur? Or was it like a like him in a freaking um, uh, like someone else in, a, in just a really convincing suit? A, no, I think it was probably a really convincing suit. Because there was this, there was this one thing floating around of like a a raptor. Yeah, I know. And he runs down the hallway. <laughs> Everybody just runs out of the way. Are you talking about that video? Yeah, man. There's a bunch of videos like that, but I'm just looking for the um the gif. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, continue talking. Have, 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 you, have you seen the one where some dude built like a, a you know these uh, like these phantom drones, mm, quad yeah. cop, quad copters, radio controlled helicopters, <laughs> drones. You just have to put that drone there. Huh? And he put like this Grim Reaper outfit on it, <laughs> and he chased I people around. <laughs> Yeah. That sounds like fun. I saw that thing, yeah. I would not like to be the person being chased by it, but I wouldn't mind getting, like, sort of doing the chasing. Also, there was a guy, I think, in America, speaking about, like, drones and things like that. There was a guy in America who recently shot one of them down because it was constantly in his backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, um, it's, it's still something that you can... <coughs> in South Africa... This is what people don't know, is if you fly something like that, you, uh, there's actually some legal issues with that. Because you're not allowed to take pictures of, or take video or pictures of other people's property. So there's, well, yeah. there's a serious weird grey area there that you can actually report a person with that to the police. But the police normally don't do anything, but they are actually liable for a very big fine. So it is illegal. Flying drones in SA is illegal. Okay, flying drones in SA in residential or commercial areas is illegal. Uh, but not you can do it in wherever perfectly what's, fine. What's that act that they have for like buildings that are under South Africa's like privacy zone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. It's your yeah, national security <coughs> act. But key, key something. Yeah, national key structures. But with the yeah. with the drones, it's it's a really grey area. I cannot even because I read so many articles where the people just got away with it. Anyways, this one guy on my broadband is he freaking complained his ass off of this guy with his drone, and then the police just came and eventually shoved him off and said. Eventually, the the police were standing there and looking at the guy's drone and saying, "Yeah, no, this is cool," and flew it around himself. Wow, because well, firstly, I don't think the law enforcement knows the law, <laughs> but but uh, it's 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 like a really gray area. It's not that. It's not that. The what? It's the, it's not that. It's massively enforced that if you fly a drone, you're definitely gonna get a fuck a five k fine. Mm. Okay, Victor says not all drones have cameras. Oh, no, that's fair, but the thing is that you can easily mount them. Right? If if the, if it's not a cam, if if there's no camera on on a drone, to me, it's a radio control toy. Yeah. It yeah. it's it, because then that's like really that's like what we did in the roller coaster enthusiasm is like when a roller coaster is built completely out of steel. But it looks like a wooden roller coaster where they still called it a wooden roller coaster. And I'm like, okay. 
The same with the drone. I mean, it needs like a camera on it, right? I think I think there's somewhere in the definition there that it has to have like a camera on it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's probably one of the only ways that you can control it further away from you, since the like it actually allows you to do so. No, no, no. You can control it as, way, as far away as your signal is. Or yeah, as... but the thing is that if your signal is very high, you kind of need a camera to be able to see what the hell it is. I don't really think that's what it's about. It's more to to, to Check shit. <laughs> so that's what it's about. <laughs> I mean, just imagine, like, I mean, they, they used a GoPro camera for uh, one of... Uh, the guys who did that thing with the treadmill. <coughs> hmm? no thing the guys good. who did that thing with the treadmill. Is, uh, I don't no idea. Oh, my mouth freaking... Oh, OK Go. Yes. OK Go used a... Um, used a, used a, uh, a thing with a GoPro on it, with, like, attached to the bottom, watching that umbrella dance of theirs one of their latest videos. Now the thing is is that what happens if they did that in an area that was actually out of bounds or out of limits? Do you think that that would give, what's it, like the American military the opportunity to shoot the damn thing down out of the sky with a missile? Oh, out of the sky? Yes, with a missile? No. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with, missiles, with, with, I with, with, totally can, use a missile. With a nuclear bomb. Yes. 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 <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's just overkill. They're probably just like, if they have any aim, like uh, an AA gun at it and just one around. Yeah, that thing just red. Or even sh a shotgun, like hell. Apparently yeah, it's there, like uh, some clay shooters, clay pigeon shooting enthusiasts among them. Well, I mean, um, I mean, Tiger Eye asks if it was a, a Tiger Night Eye. You asks if it was a GoPro, and I'm pretty sure it was a GoPro since it was attached to a flying thing. Well, so it, well, it's not necessarily. Powerful. You get a lot of those cameras, but the GoPros take the best like footage at the moment for action footage. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm assuming it was a GoPro. It might not have been a GoPro, but at the end of the day, uh, it's it's a pretty good bet that it was. Micro drones. Wait, it's a YouTube link. I can't click on that. It's gonna yeah. crash the stream. Yeah, but I mean, above and beyond that, if we did click on this, if we all clicked on the YouTube link at the same time, then you guys would have silence for as long as that um, video would be going for. A la, um, uh, what's it, Kage and, and uh, two, that one time that they were talking about that. It's like, cool, yeah, no, if you want to watch us, if you want to see us watch a YouTube link, this is what it's going to look like. And they just stared at the computer for about like a minute <laughs> in silence. Yeah, no, fair point. Mm -hmm. Raccoon says it's nine seconds. <laughs> no, click on it. Look, I'll, I'll look at it and I'll comment. Yeah. You, you have the terrible 3G connection. You're going to look at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look at it. And it's actually working just fine. Yeah, but you're, you're <laughs> yeah, I can already I hear your audio. is going crap. Definitely hear a drop in your audio quality. <laughs> and that was fine. That was amazing. Wow, it was amazing. It was just a cat swatting a micro thingy. It was actually, yeah, it's, it's kind of tiny. Dude, I, I, I still remember there was like, um, it was one of uh, the Razer, the company that does, makes like all those high-end um, computer peripherals or gaming. Yeah. Um, they constantly have, um, what's his name? Uh, April Fool's still Day not that big. <laughs> they have April Fool's Day pranks going on quite mm -hmm. often. And uh, one they had a few years back was um, basically a sort of a micro drone that you can like... Uh, Wrapper, not a wrapper on your wrist, but like a pocket sized micro drone that would fly around behind you. And then you have this like uh, Google Glass kind of uh, heads up display that constantly showed you in third person view. One of like, the most interesting. Oh, no, that's, that's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> Turn left. Yeah. And, and even you could actually, you, you could literally play like a proper, you know, yeah. third person game just by doing that a lot. And it actually would give you like dialogue. It, whenever you talk to someone, it would like fly into position firstly behind you when the person is talking and then behind the other person when they're waiting for a response that it was, it was like a whole Mass Effect kind of thing like best RPG ever yep. have you guys seen that video where the guy is, a f is playing a first person shooter but it's like real and then oh, yeah, you the have to person. you have to help him like through the map and you have to say everything that he needs to do like I think we talked about wasn't he chasing after the cookie yeah. monster I don't know, but no, we this the cookie dude. Last for the week before, Th this guy was like shooting and killing things, and, uh, and but it's all like fake. But it was so well done that <laughs> I'm like, wow. 
Yeah, it was really good actually. I, I, I kind of want to see if I can, can't find that now. Well, not now. Yeah, I, I, I cannot, I don't know what to search for. Like, first person shooter, not... Yeah, first person <laughs> shooter chat roulette. I think yeah, Victor actually finds it very, very interesting. Uh, he's mm. actually saying a very, very interesting thing here. He finds funny is, is that it's okay to take a photo from the street or from a hotel window. But to put it on a drone, it's bad. That, in but that case, look at look at the uh, the uh, scratch and I were actually talking about it on Thursday, or actually no, on Saturday. Um, we were talking about the idea that there was a there was a camera, on like one of the highest buildings in Cape Town that took like a panorama, of or something like over the million something um, pictures. Quite, yeah, quite a few pixels. Of of the entirety of uh, the city of Cape Town. To the point where you would see lovely little, yes please, lovely little um, uh, disembodied people, like one, one half of the body is walking back, the other half of the body is still standing there, people smoking on their balconies, everything like that. And yes, it actually becomes, a, that, that is a security risk, essentially. That's why when Google did it, uh, yeah. you would notice the faces are blurred out, but it's still the property. So that's why I say there is this massive gray area with that. It's not like, uh, I can guarantee you, if you fly a quadcopter with a camera attached to it, you probably won't get a fine. But it, it is technically illegal. Mm. And if, you, if, if, if you fly it around residential or commercial areas, fly it around anywhere else in public places, that's fine. But technically, it's actually illegal to have that for yeah. flying around homes. No, 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 you're right. I mean, um, like, there's, there's no way that I would love to take pictures of somebody else's hose, um, as, as Rowan so eloquently um, says it. Well, I want to fucking spy on people. I don't. I really don't want to know that, because the thing is that at the end of the day... Um, I mean, I really don't want another uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie coming out of this. No, country. dude, I would actually, totally you know dig like spying you know on what? people. Actually, <laughs> the, um, who's the person who's closest to Alfred Hitchcock as a director right now? Right now? Right now. I have no idea. Horror directors, I'm assuming specifically. Um, no, I have no idea. I don't know directors at all. Okay, well, we find the person who's closest to Alfred Hitchcock, and then we um, update his movie about that guy who broke his legs and was in his house and was watching a MURDER from somebody else's window. What? What was that about? Like, which movie was that? I didn't even know. Not the birds. Uh, yeah, maybe the birds, the drones. That actually sounds pretty interesting, Victor. Thanks. Um, <laughs> the drones no, no, no. come. It's about a guy who gets into an accident. He's stuck at home and he gets bored and he watches I know Rocco's Modern Life also made like a spoof of it at one point. In fact, Rocco's Modern Life has made a large amount of spoofs of horror movies. They made exactly a horror. The, you're they did The Shining. It's a, man. It's a, it's about that like obsessed chick who breaks his legs to keep him. No, 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 oh. no, not that one. It is about a guy who gets stuck in an accident. Um, he gets bored and he starts spying at people through his um, through through a pair of binoculars. And then he re he sees what looks to be a murder, like in a in a place across the way. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know at all. Like, Disturbed. No. What? <laughs> I, don't, I I don't even know what what you're talking about. This is the, what, it's what? an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh no! Oh, I have no idea. Anyone oh. in the audience? Five the I have no idea. I, I I believe you that there would be a movie like that, and I kind of. It does sound like a Hitchcock kind of thing, but I have no idea. I, I, I already... Uh, my my um, brain works exactly the same as Tiger Night High here. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, because I also heard The Shining, and I'm like... What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Kubrick did The Shining. Yeah, Kubrick did The Shining. Yeah, no, I'm I'm stumped. I have no idea. I'm not that. talking about just Alfred Hitchcock. I'm talking about the entire idea that like, um, Rocco's Modern Life did a whole bunch of uh, spoofs of those things. Okay, a spoof of The Shining. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I get and it. I get it. A spoof of the same movie that I'm talking about right now. Yeah, which I don't know. Which we don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I will take your word for it. Hey, a spoof of The Shining, I might want to watch that. 
So, I mean... Have you seen Rear Reentry? Window! Rear Window, 1954. Oh. Uh, okay. No. okay, so it's not like a comedy spoof? No, or? no, no, no. The movie that I'm talking about is called Rear Window. A wheelchair, a wheelchair bound a photographer spies on his neighbors from his apartment window and becomes convinced that one of them has committed murder. Disturbia. Uh -huh. <laughs> Same story. <laughs> I, th I think you can build quite an, quite sort of an interesting movie around the whole idea of like, um, oh, around the whole drone thing, but make it like more, uh, not deeper, but like, uh, what's his name? Uh, thinner. Not thinner. Um, is is this whole thing like if, uh, for security reasons, people have people have started implementing or governments have started implementing like big. Uh, drones to do like mass surveillance on on uh, public areas and stuff. And if you, I mean, I'd love to see someone sort of try and piece together some like really big unsolved mystery, just like panning through uh, like security footage after security footage like that, like on a on a scale of like completely citywide. I think that might make for an interesting movie or read or something. Uh, you yeah, yeah, mentioned yeah. Half Life Two. Mm -hmm. No idea. Like, what does that have to do with Half Life Two? Like bad guys in Half Life Two, where they're using that kind of stuff. Too. I, I think what he's talking about the in, in Half Life Two, the the combine used that that ball. Oh, those ball. Flying, yeah, those yeah. Cameras, yeah. And what they what they did, what I actually liked about the game is that when you're under serious distress or something in the game, the the stuff flashes you deliberately so that you can't see. That was actually like a really cool thing that they added in that game. I wouldn't have thought about that. Yeah, that, yeah that's a really nice design choice. Mm. Yeah, okay. But in any case, at least I found out what the damn like video's name was. Which there is, there is, uh, the, the, in any ways, more, more furry related. Has anybody seen uh, the spoofs that they did on like all these old classic films? One including The Shining was reenacted by bunnies. Have you guys ever seen that? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You talked about like that, huh? the, the Shining in like 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, what do you call those things? The but I remember that they did the same thing with uh, Brokeback Mountain, which was amazing. Yeah, I like that. Everything, yeah. Oh, 30 seconds, Raccoon is right. 30 seconds. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like uh, the movie uh, was portrayed in 30 seconds as acted out by bunnies or something like that. That was cool. Um, I, I like the alien one the most. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like you obviously hear it's like one person doing the voices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh, uh, is Happy Tree Friends still in the making? Jeez. It was called Thirty Second Bunnies. Ah, okay. Mm. Thirty yeah. Second Bunnies. I is Happy I... Tree Friends still in the making? I hope so. I used to love it. it was I, like... I I have the episodes in flash format. I like, do. I do too. Like way back when. Way Look, if back. That's the case. What about Lenore? Uh, I think Lenore stopped. They ran out of material. No, 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 it's not that they ran out of uh, material, it's just that they killed her off. Ah, again, again. There was, there was a one point where she was just farting, and just farting for an entire day. And she just died. Amazing. It was great writing, I loved it. Oh, and what's that woman, the girl who was having that weird, like, episode, there was only one of them that actually came out. Uh, yeah, the other one you're talking about, but that was just like a flash animation someone did on DeviantArt. Yeah. Exactly. God, but those were those were actually really awesome. Those were some of the first things that we actually watched back in the what's it, nineteen, uh, late nineties. Yeah, like. Um. Ice it's my moon pa, Bob. Oh my! Jo uh, yeah. Um. It Joe uh, cartoon. Joe cartoon. Yeah, Joe cartoon and um, uh, stick death and all that kind of stupid shit. Yeah. Ugh, being a kid again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tiger Knight I say is, yeah, well, it was built in Flash Player, they make MLP in the same program. Yeah, probably. Uh, Aren't they using hey, Toon hey. Boom for that stuff? Sorry? Aren't they using Toon Boom? I thought that was like... No, 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 I, I, yeah, I think Scratch is right. It, it looks Flash animated because it uses the same type of animation skill, but it's not Adobe Flash. It just looks that way. Mm. The same like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. You yeah. you immediately saw the art style. It's like this type of. It looks like it's done in Adobe Flash, but it, yeah. it's yeah. Not. We're doing contract work for an animation house now, and 
speaking to some of the people there, they they constantly mention or reference the application Toon Boom, and I think that's sort of become the industry standard. Yeah. Scratch and yep. Animation House. Yeah. <clears throat> just, just an Animation House. Well, they make games as well, but I mean, yeah. Like South Park. South Park now uses stop motion animation and that type of thing. Actually, since the second season. People don't know this. The The first season was little pieces of paper cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they're on the, have to, obviously have to go to something a little bit more robust. Yeah, a little bit quicker. Yeah. Uh, speaking, like, no, no offense, or at least I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue quickly to something that Victor was talking about when it comes to autonomous drones. Mm -hmm. um, speaking about the entire thing, uh, remember... Who's one of our biggest doomsayers, doomsayer scientists in the world at this point? I don't know. Yeah. Stephen Hawking. You always talk about Hawking, exactly. end, end of the universe. So the person <laughs> who's also talking about the idea that no, you should not give weapons to autonomous um, drones. Yeah. Because holy shit, we will have Skynet. No, no, but that is already happening. It's not just drones. It's like I saw uh, Google is actually in secrecy Skynet. They have like these military contracts and they're building artificial intelligence for tanks, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they realize that we're talking to an international here. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, so we right? might be under like well, some right tank now. might shoot me down. They have to bring it to South Africa, and trust me, I'm not worth it. Okay, dude, dude listen up. I mean, freaking uh, Google or Alphabet or whatever the hell they're called now. Like, they own Boston Dynamics. They own like quite a few. Uh, AI and neural networking companies, like it's uh, and a few like defense and um, uh, medical platforms as well. It's not, it's no secret. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's that kind of stuff. But whether they're going to turn into Skynet or not is kind of up for debate. Yeah, well, Skynet requires this AI to start. You have the iRobot way, and then you have the, the Terminator way. The iRobot way is the way that says that it is actually for the benefit of humankind, where they need to control us, right? Yeah. Where, where the Terminator way was, I think the things got, like, self-aware, <laughs> and then they need to, to kill off, like, all the humans. So, who knows? That might actually happen, and actually, even according to Stephen Hawking, like I've said, this, that is a legitimate threat. It is a legitimate threat. To, to people. It sounds so weird and sci-fi, but if you consider uh, a neurological mapping and artificial intelligence, right, you might actually create something like that, because you can easily program a thing to kill people. But the moment you let things program other things that programs other things that that's yeah. where that mapping starts getting crazy if it's weird then yeah next next thing you know you've got uh, shut the train sorry what the fuck wow dude yeah. are you under attack by droids it's that tank train and shit there's <laughs> <laughs> a tank coming <laughs> I like trains. <laughs> I can just imagine the train like just detouring directly towards your house. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of interesting trains, you guys heard about the Nazi gold train they found in Poland? Huh? Say what? There was uh, there were a bunch of like uh, two no two guys a German a German and a Pole. They uh, <laughs> wow that sounds like a bad joke starting they, carry on. Yeah, but they they found the location of like some like legendary train that. Uh, the the Nazis rolled out of Poland just before the end of World War Two, and like hid in some underground tunnels, and it was a, a supposedly carrying like tons and tons of gold that the Nazis had stole of the. And, and did they find all the gold? Yeah, well, they found it, and they said they would return it to um, like the Polish government or something, uh, or whoever the hell, uh, for like I think it's a ten percent finder's fee of whatever the worth of the gold was. Wow. Fuck. Imagine people were on the gold standard still. Yeah, but like, that is a, that is a lot of money. Just the fact that, that is a lot of money, yeah. It's just the fact that they found a train missing, like, in a hill somewhere. I always How wanted to get there in the first place. The Nazis built, un built underground trains, uh, railroads. 
Oh, 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 so they were the person who they, they were the people who first like built the first metro rail, like the first proper underground railroad. Possibly. Right, sorry, uh, huh. um, you're saying? I always wanted to pick up that gold bar at Gold Reef City. If you go in the mine tour and you go down into the mine underground where it's fucking hot and humid and shit, and you go up and then the tour continues in this place where they t where they show you how gold is made, and then they always have a gold bar there, and they say if you could pick it up with one hand, you can take it home. Wow. It's still there. <laughs> they picked it up. So, so that means that even the biggest bodybuilders aren't able to actually pick that down. It's, it's not the fact that it's too heavy. It's, it's slippery. It's as slippery, fun. that's why. And it's angled, right? So you, you, you cannot... You cannot get your fingers underneath it. Yeah, you, you have to. <laughs> it's impossible to pick it up. I like I like Tiger Night Eyes' <laughs> uh, uh, thing for that. It's rigged. <laughs> it is rigged. It's. It, I'm about to say it's rigid, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but that thing is rigged. It's like you know if you if you're smart enough and you see it, you know you're not going to be able to pick that up. Not the way that they wanted to. You want you to do so it. So you can't turn it over. You you won't be able to. I can guarantee you that. Dude. Dude, and, and, and I can promise you there was some boorer there. Dude, that tried that. <laughs> Find a couple of people who fap a lot. And and there were people and there were even well you're not allowed to then but multiple people trying to pick it up but. But I think the rules are that you are actually not allowed to even just push it over. You should pick it up directly. Yeah, the Doge has the right idea then. Super blue fingers. I think because somebody probably did that even. But I think <laughs> it can, and remember, gold is heavy, and that's not that's not like the stand. That's like the old gold bars size. It's not like these little. <laughs> gold little bars that you see, that how they actually forge them today. Mm -hmm. It's it's like that all, it's, uh, gold is not light. Yeah, no, it's definitely not light. Mm. Heaviest metal I ever held in my hand was uh, depleted uranium. Jeez. You held depleted uranium in your hand? That, that explains why you've got mental issues. Yeah, well, depleted uranium is like bullets, so it is radioactive, but not that much. It's still decaying, sort of. Yeah, well, so I don't want to have anything that's like... Uh, that you Eating a like banana it. is more fucking radiation than that. Yeah, I know, but I flew today. <laughs> uh, there's more radiation going on there as well, but... Like, yeah, I, I know, I, like I, with I, all those camp trails. No, no, dude, like, it's science. Like, you know, if you're closer to the sun out of our atmosphere, you're exposing yourself to more radiation. Like, it's, uh, it's chemtrail. <coughs> it's fucking, it's science. I also held, like, a large disc diamond in my hand once <laughs> in university. Doge, just, just, just as a point, like, uh, Anpu, Doge actually says that you need mental issues to put depleted uranium in your hand in the first place. It was all the, the stuff freaking from physics. What? <laughs> Old what? <laughs> oh yeah! Now we've got two out of three doing brain farts. What's next? We had a crazy physics lecture. He was on Liberty Life Learning Channel. Is it that guy? Like, what's his name? No, no, no. Uh, it it was he was n not the math not, guy. Yeah, not uh, the math guy with the black hands with like. So it, it was uh, it was the black guy. Okay. That that uh, some fundamental physics things on Liberty Life Learning Channel. That was my... I have to look it up. I think it's in my textbook somewhere or where, wherever where I probably... because my textbooks are always written with like all sorts of shit. You are heavily privileged. Do you know that? <laughs> you had a school that got the guy from Liberty Life to come to your school. Uh, that wasn't school. That wasn't university. You got... you're heavily privileged in university too then. <laughs> Yeah, Billy Perverage, you were in a university. Like, I mean, the thing is, is that, like, I did sports science for three years, and not once did I see Tim Noakes. <laughs> yeah, let's not start on Tim Noakes. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, they, they... Okay, sorry, four years. They kind of freaking didn't care. I, I held, like, but it's synthetic. It's, like, lab-created diamond. Oh, oh, zircon. 
uh, it's exactly the same composition, uh, density and everything. Well, I'm not too sure about the density entirely because I know like a drill bit mm -hmm. for the mines. I think they still use actual diamonds because I still uh, think an actual diamond is harder in density. But uh, just to do, uh, uh, what do you call it, heat induction. Uh -huh. Experiments with it because you hold that thing like with one hand and immediately the other to side is turned up to 37 degrees Celsius. Jeez. That's how quickly it conducts heat. Carbon. Yeah, hmm. that's true. Carbon is a very good conductor. Okay, enough uh, about. Fine, fine. Yeah, I think everybody here is going like. Ugh. No, no, no. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are a couple of science science people here. It would be worse if we went on about linguistics. Might, might not. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's let's actually talk about the newest <coughs> South African discovery and our uh, and our government's response to it. Oh, please, yes. What? Homo naledi. Oh. Which a lot of people can't pronounce in America at this point. Yeah, not yet. Give it time. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So the government's response to it. Is literally stop. Don't don't bury these apes here, uh, or the white people buried these apes here. Um, don't be racist. I'm not. I do not come from this evolutionary stream. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. It's just it's silly. Yeah, but that's a topic that I t uh, I tend to try to avoid around a lot of people. It's like um, uh, evolution and whatnot because. I've, I've noticed, especially in South Africa, there's m much more fundamentalists here than you think. No, it's, yeah. And I notice that, like, even, like, in online communities and whatnot, yeah, you, you find them there, and they immediately, like, get, like, this bad look at you, and you say, no, the Earth's older than 6,000 years. Now, you shouldn't feel shit about it, but the thing is, is I don't know what it is for these people. Is they, they seriously dislike you when you start mentioning stuff like that. It's the same way when, when a comedian, even though he's a crap comedian today, well, maybe I shouldn't mention any names, uh, said he's an atheist. And all of a sudden he lost like his entire audience. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't mention that in fundamentalist South Africa. Yeah. When your entire audience is fundamentalist South Africans. I mean, what is was was that Gusper de Vries? Yes. Oh, come on. But Gusper, I mean, like, what's what's weird though is is that like Gusper de Vries has made like jokes against the church, jokes against the church, and more jokes against the church. And he comes out as an atheist, and suddenly all the church people are like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" The yeah. hell is that? Nah. It's like cool. We're we're okay with laughing at him because like, or laughing because oh, he's making jokes because you know the church really isn't that good, or this or that or the other thing. And suddenly, oh yeah, I am an atheist. Um. Uh, 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 go off stage, bitch. I don't know. Yeah. The, oh yeah, that, that's an interesting topic. What is this news twenty four? <coughs> oh, okay. I have coffee coming out of my nose. That is not cool. You Sorry. have coffee coming out of your nose. <laughs> Tell me you're drinking coffee, please. Yeah, he is. <laughs> because that would just be weird. <laughs> uh, if anyone should have coffee coming out of their nose, it's my flatmate. He said he's had like four four pots of coffee this week. End. This, <coughs> end. this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sticky sauce and tannic. Sticky sauce furry. Well, sort of. Stanic, actually, but you know. Sa okay, yeah. it's supposed to be <laughs> satanic. Dude, Amazing. Dude, that was just made up by that, like, uh, one uh, fucking joke. Satire at Facebook page. Yeah, I but think it's, it's probably a satire. But, but, yeah, it, it, it's but people will follow it. Remember, there are churches out there that are online at this point that people follow. Yeah, but I, I, I like the memes. I mean, it, well, not really all okay, of them, but honestly, it's, honestly, it's, it's, honestly, I saw Sticky sacrificing a gummy bear, dude. That is like in candlelight. But the thing is that they've sacrificed gummy bears at Anthrocon like practically every other day. Um, and like the big ones, that. I, I bite the heads off gummy bears. 
Yeah. No. Um, actually, I just took a big swallow of coffee, and somehow in my swallow, half of it went up my nose, and then it came out my nose. Hold on. It's wonderful. Any case, but um, the thing is, is that, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are furries out there, furries in South Africa, that I have spoken to, that I've asked, like they said, you know, uh, my parents have sort of researched furries, and are researching big fucking parentheses, um, and they say, oh, no, 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 the churches say that they're, that they're satanic. And I'm going to sit in the ground like, wait, what? Yeah, because some churches probably the, say they're satanic. It's not that. <laughs> they, went to, they went to a spoof site. Uh, Land of a Baptist. Landover. They went to Landover. <laughs> there was a big fucking, there was a forum about this entire thing. <laughs> it is they funny went to as hell. Landover out. Church. It's funny they as found fuck. this entire thing out, and they're like, okay, cool, I believe this. That is horrifying. That is the only reason why satire websites... Wait, do people actually kind of believe yes, that? people actually believe that. <laughs> so people read Land of the Baptist and they take that information and say, this is the truth. This is the truth. Land of the Baptist. Land of the Baptist. Okay, the furries are the least of my worries. Have you seen the way the Land of the Baptist <laughs> tells you how you should treat women? Well, they don't look at that. Remember, the thing is that they go there... Look, you, s you, you go to a thing, you, uh, I, and I actually did it. I didn't check for anything else. I just looked for um, church believes or church thinks that furries are satanic. And then question mark. And literally, first well, the first thing that popped up was Landover Church. And I mean, immediately, you're going to go, okay, cool, Landover Baptist Church. And they actually, oh, they, have, they have their grand whatevers, they've got their priests, they've got their pastors all talking about the exact same thing. And at the end of the day, anybody who is not sort of well-versed in the internet is going to go, I believe this. Yeah, you're right, you get gullible people. People who don't do research. But Poe's law, but that is that is blatantly satire. It's it's even supposed to be that way. The Pose most blatant satire can be taken absolutely one hundred percent as truth. Poe's laws, uh, uh, Raku and Poe's laws, where we're all still struggling with the flat of society. <laughs> that that is Poe's law, because they are probably the one group of people that exists, right? Where I still don't know, are is it satire or are they fucking for real, right? Now, if for those who don't know, that didn't listen to the first episode that we ever did on the podcast, the Flat Earth Society is actually a group of people, a large group of people, that still thinks the Earth is flat. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and agree. but yeah. po post law is what if you go to the site, right? You you cannot tell whether the person that you're talking to is joking or not. Hmm. That, that is because once something gets said like that, you really actually can't tell the difference. But a gullible person needs to fall for the land of a Baptist church. Well, it's look, not ab above and beyond that. If you look at a, if you look at spares when it comes to Orson Welles's War of the Worlds, like seriously. Like, that came out. It was a story. It came out. People were frightened. They were going to bomb shelters. They were buying out, like, a whole bunch of cans of beans. And goodness knows what else people do when they're in that kind of, like, situation. Yeah, just but because, just because there was a radio series of War of the Worlds going on at the for time. For the time, for the time that the series of War of the Worlds was going on, they thought that that was real news. And that is just, firstly, you know what, in all fairness, best written book ever since it got an entire nation to go into <laughs> panic mode. Um, yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah, but you know what? Some people are just stupid. You know what was the strangest 911 call that was ever made? Right? 911 calls, actually. There was a blackout in Los Angeles, like complete power blackout years ago. And uh, oh no. 911 was phoned so many times. Uh, I, th I think they're talking about, they even have the, the, you can Google this somewhere, but they even have like the number of 911 phone calls that came in that is, uh, are people that are scared because there's some strange, ominous clouds in the night sky that they don't know what it is. So for the very first time they saw the Milky Way. They saw the Milky Way. 
<sighs> because there's no light pollution. <laughs> oh my god. And they, they, they phone like 911 and say, It's is, the end of the world! It is saddening. That and actually on, happens. Yeah, so. and on that bombshell. It's, it's 9.30. Yeah. Oh well. It is. Yeah, and I really want to get to bed. I am knackered from this. I can imagine you're knackered. Yeah. All right. So, uh, thank you guys for listening. We were just sort of having chatting massively random shit, <laughs> which is which is which is what we're very good at. I have to say about that. Yeah. But yeah, um, I would like to thank Studrock, uh, Rakuin, Victor, Spaz, Tiger Knight, Fire, 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 Fire. And Booglish for um, all joining Doge as well. A uh, whole bunch of other furs that were probably listening to us who haven't actually put their names onto our uh, little site here. But yeah, uh, did I say Tiger Night Eye? You didn't did. say Tiger Night Eye. Did I say Tiger Night Eye? Tiger Night Eye. For Tiger three Tiger fucking Night. times. There we go. Cool. But thank you all for, for listening to the podcast. We really appreciate your uh, attendance and your, and your support and your comments and your questions and everything like that it's always very very welcome once again for those of you who haven't yet follow us on twitter at south africa follow us on facebook at south africa follow us on youtube south africa um and yeah bother us in other places too yeah we're also on like uh, we're also very well the one of us out of the three of us are fairly active on the ZFR forums so if you want to send private messages giving us suggestions and things like that I'm always open to that Ivic Wolf um, <clears throat> above and beyond that uh, send us any suggestions that you want if you have people that you would like to uh, sort of have us try get have us try get then we're more than welcome to try and get them or if you have anybody who is willing to actually listen or speak with us That'd be awesome. Buglish, there is a Brian the 26th of September. Um, uh, yes, Raku and Unsi, but let me, give me his details and stuff. Thank you. <laughs> you know him, apparently, so let me know. Just send me a PM on ZFR. And he's probably going to do so in the next hour or so. So yeah, Unsi might be uh, no. You well, I mean, you mentioned him, but you didn't give me his proper details. And if you did, I probably forgot, and I'm terribly, terribly sorry. Okay, well, we'll get to that. Also, Rage Bry in October. Uh, also at Victor's place. Um, those of you who are going. Unpu, I'm sorry. Scratch. If the Bry, if the Bry is a Saturday, unfortunately not. Scratch. Try your heart out. Mm -hmm. um, because the thing is, is that like one of the things that I really want to try and do at some point is have all three of us in the same room mm -hmm. to actually do like a proper podcast. That that actually never happened, by the way. Yeah, it might soon though. We we might need to open a Patreon for that. <laughs> yeah, Patreon. Please send us money so that we can fly to each other's areas. Mm. Uh, no. Okay, okay. I think this thing's gone on long enough. Yeah. Okay. It's gone right. on three minutes longer than normal. In cool fact, beans. probably not even than normal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but thank you guys all for listening. We really hope that you guys enjoyed our podcast, and we'll see you next week, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget. Uh, wait. Holy shit! Is next week Sunday? Yes, it is. Next uh, week Sunday is the twentieth of September. Our year anniversary. Yeah, our, our one year anniversary by a day earlier, so we'll probably do the podcast on the Sunday for the Monday. But yeah, Doge as well, because Doge was on here that I didn't necessarily mention, so woo. Okay. I did I mention Doge? Two. I mentioned him three times now. Woo. Okay. Cheers guys. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye.